Hello, my name is Dan Qualiana, Head of Developer Relations at Zebra Technologies, and I'd like to welcome you to August's Dev Talk. This month, we will be hearing from Zebra software architect Darren Campbell talking about how to migrate from Windows Mobile or CE to Android with Enterprise Browser. Uh, but before we dive in, I wanted to just let everyone know that uh, so far this year, Zebra has had four of our App Forum conferences. These are technical conferences showcasing um, really how Zebra works within the software industry, how to integrate with our products and offerings, but also how we tie in with other industry leaders, uh, Android, Microsoft, Baidu, uh, Yahoo, we had a number of partners at these. Um, if you were not able to attend the event, or if you were but wanted to see more about it, we do have all of the slides and presentations posted on our developer portal at developer.zebra.com. Uh, Darren's showing on the screen right here. If you click on developer events and kind of scroll down, you'll see that we do have information for all four of the events. Um, Three of them were conducted in English. Uh, the one in Shanghai was conducted in Mandarin. So any of those, any folks who speak Mandarin, all those slides from Shanghai are, are translated there. We are starting to post uh, the videos on this site as well. So if, as particularly if you look at the Prague session, you'll see some of those videos posted. However, all of the videos now are also on YouTube on Zebra Technologies channel, there is a playlist specifically for App Forum, and you'll see some of the keynotes as well as the breakout sessions. And Darren's showing here that uh, if you go and you click on some of these presentations, you'll see the ones that do have the videos in there. Um, if you do have any questions on these, uh, feel free to post a comment on the site. If you log in, you'll be able to see them. And you can see here, if you click on the presentations, there will be a comment below it that has uh, the embedded video. So you can watch those there. Um, and this is, I think this is one that Darren helped to do as well, uh, along with Pietro Maggi, one of our uh, sales engineers and developer evangelists in Europe. So we definitely welcome you to check out all those videos, uh, whether you're interested in doing proactive learning or really just want to, if you have a question, uh, some of these are really helpful for looking at uh, uh, how to accomplish certain tasks, what some of the products can do, this one in particular looking at the different flavors of Android and how those play in the enterprise, some of the key differences, how to work on them. Uh, so without further ado, um, I guess I do also want to remind you if you miss any of our dev talks and want to find those, we also have these posted on our developer events section. And similarly, we also have the videos of the sessions on YouTube. There is a playlist under the Zebra channel that's focused just on dev talks. So those are all there. So now I'd like to turn it over to Darren so he can teach us more about migrating our apps uh, to Android with Enterprise Browser. Thanks very much, Dan. Yeah, so uh, this is a topic which is quite near and dear to my heart. Just a little bit of uh, history on myself. I was one of the original developers of Pocket Browser, which was uh, an industrial browser offered by one of Zebra's ancestor companies. So I'm quite familiar with this topic, hence why I'm talking about it today. I'm not on the current developer team for Enterprise Browser, but I do have a close working relationship with them. So any requirements, requests, then you know we can, they can be funneled through me, or I can obviously funnel them to the appropriate team. Uh, also, industrial browsers, just in general, before enterprise browsers, have been around for you know pretty much a decade. So when I talk about Zebra's products, I'm also including their Zebra's ancestor companies, uh, Motorola Solutions, Motorola, uh, all at one point or another owned these uh, browsers, which I'll be talking about. But for just simplicity's sake, I'll be referring to everything as a, a Zebra product. So the agenda for today, just going to go over what industrial browsers are quickly. Um, I'm going to assume most people listening to this webinar are familiar with them, but it's, it's worth reiterating. Some general considerations as you move from older devices, uh, Windows Mobile CE, to our newer Android devices. 
and then just taking each in turn the in turn sorry the possible migration paths you might be going to so over the years and like i say i joined the company in 2008 when pocket browser was a couple of years old i think at that point we've had an, a, a number of product lines which have all been industrial browsers and have all uh, had backwards compatibility with each other which makes my job here today somewhat more simple because it's just simply a case of letting you know how to enable that backwards compatibility but uh, they all will have their own little quirks that it's worth talking about as we go through so just industrial browsers in general what are they can I interrupt yeah. for one second? I failed to mention, if anyone does have a question, there is a uh, chat window or a question window uh, in the GoToWebinar uh, section of this. And please just type the question in and we can, uh, we can ask Darren those questions. So sorry for the interruption. So, no, no problem, Dan. Normally, when you jump in like that, it's to tell me my microphone is breaking up and I've had all sorts of technical problems, so I'm relieved that it wasn't anything more serious. Okay, so industrial browsers. Uh, so even, uh, like, I remember learning about this at university. You know, you, you're able to wrap a web browser component within a native application, and then you can easily render HTML and JavaScript code within a native app. And that's what industrial browsers have been doing ever since their first inception. Uh, the, the, the difference here, the, the key thing to understand is they're not a browser that you would use to browse Google or Facebook or you know, msn.com back in the day. They're designed to allow you to reuse your HTML and JavaScript skill sets to access the specialized hardware on our industrial devices. So you know, specifically bar, barcode scanners, mag stripe readers printers you know we we have uh, very good apis we're working with the the zebra printer families as well uh they also designed primarily for ease of development obviously javascript is a very easy language to get started with one of those that's very difficult to master and allows some form of platform platform agnosticism uh, so back in the day the, when it was a windows mobile ce uh, environment we were more concerned with different screen sizes uh, different versions of CE different versions of the browser running on the device but nowadays we're into like platform um, operating system agnosticism that we can just move to Android whereas previously we were running on on Windows Mobile CE so some examples of industrial browsers it's not just the Zebra browsers pocket browser row elements shared runtime EB uh, also from other companies over the years, there's been the Nortec browser, Intermec browser, and uh, Honeywell's, Intermec, Honeywell's enterprise browser. And as we'll see, certainly, uh, you know, it used to be the case that all of these browsers were, you know, quite similar with, with one another, certainly in terms of their API sets, but it does make our jobs a little bit more simple nowadays, that similarity that, that we first had. So just in general, uh, just if you think about a Windows Mobile CE device, they were always uh, had a resistive touch screen so you had to get the stylus out of the bottom of the device the keyboard was very small the end user was probably in all honesty using a biro in order to touch the screen so you're designing your apps to be very keyboard centric uh, maybe using the arrow keys maybe some kind of quick input using um, the, the keyboard obviously we don't have hardware keyboards with the android devices by and large there are you know, Zebra do offer a number of devices with those hardware keyboards, but you may find yourself having to port to an Android device without a hardware keyboard. This is a kind of general consideration where I discussed it in quite a lot of detail in my enterprise browser presentation at the App Forum. So that's one of the videos that Dan was talking about at the beginning of the talk. If you want to learn more about how to use the software keyboard rather than the hardware keyboard, more about using the viewport, then do check out my presentation I gave in Prague and, and Las Vegas because it's, uh, it, it's, it goes through in detail exactly how you might do all of that via DOM injection without changing your Pocket Browser app. Another general consideration is viewport. So Windows Mobile CE, these, you know, this technology has been, or well, certainly was around for years, predating the viewport. Nowadays, if you were writing a modern mobile application, you would specify viewport on the page and it would just render lovely on a mobile device. Without that viewport, 
everything looks very small, the browser doesn't quite know how to render it, you end up having to pan, zoom, you know, or pinch, pinch and zoom and pan around the screen. It's, uh, it, it's a sub experience compared to having a viewport. So it's, it's, it's a difference that's happened over the years and the screen resolutions are obviously now a lot higher in Android than they were in Windows Mobile CE. Finally, in terms of the general considerations, licensing, now the, the licensing model between Pocket Browser, Row Elements, Shared Runtime, and Enterprise Browser has not changed since 2008, I think it is. So it's, it's getting fairly old now. They are talking about upgrading the license system at some point in the future. But just bear in mind, you can't have multiple products licensed on the same device. Bit, bit of an oversight, but you just can't do it and it's going to be a per device license that's the licensing model uh, for now it's just you know it might change in the future but just uh, just be aware of these limitations so now i want to take us through each of the possible scenarios uh, of migrating from windows mobile to ce using enterprise browser so the most simple scenario is if you've already got enterprise browser running on your Windows Mobile CE device. Now there's, in theory, now there's a config file associated with enterprise browser, and in that config file, you just point it at the start page of your app. So in all likelihood, this, your application is running on some server in, in the cloud somewhere. Now this should just work. You, the, the, the workflow is you install enterprise browser, same version, on Android, so each version of EB currently supports both Windows CE Mobile and Android. So you install EB on Android, copy the config over, and it should just work. Now there will probably be some tweaks required to the rendering of the page. Like I like I said earlier, maybe the viewport needs adding through DOM injection. Maybe the application depends on the keyboard, and you have to do some DOM injection to intercept the keys and you know, change the workflow of your app somehow. I, I don't know, that would be app specific, but hopefully it would just work. It's worth noting at this point that there are two different modes in which Enterprise Browser will, will work on Windows Mobile CE. It might be working in IE mode, which uses the Internet Explorer rendering engine on the device. It doesn't come bundled with the IE rendering engine. That's already existing as a component on the Windows device or it could be using Zebra's proprietary WebKit rendering engine, which was written specifically to run on Windows Mobile CE devices. Now, that, that WebKit rendering engine is not available to run on Android. It will only run on Windows Mobile CE. But if at the moment you're running with the IE rendering engine, and I'm trying to cover all possibilities here, you might find it easier to upgrade in steps. So the first step would be to stay on Windows Mobile CE with the IE engine and move to the WebKit engine on that same device. And that's just a config change. You have to make sure you have the right version of EB installed that comes with the, the WebKit option. But that's fairly obvious if you look at the installer, one says with WebKit and one says without WebKit. And secondly, the, the, the second step would then be to move from Windows Mobile CE running WebKit to Android. It's not the same underlying rendering engine. Uh, WebKit, WebKit is obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious, but, but now you know, when this was written, we were around 2012 it started and development has proceeded and up until the present day. The only problem is Web, WebKit is a modern rendering engine and trying to run that on older hardware, you come into processor limitations, RAM limitations, there's no GPUs on these old devices, so maybe rendering would be quite slow. So we've had to cut back on some of the capabilities, particularly in the modern WebKit features. And now you're moving to Android with the Blink rendering engine in Chrome, uh, uh, and you know every, there may be some additional rendering quirks or additional features that you can take advantage of. So that's the simple case. So we're going back in time uh, in, in my career, but uh, before Enterprise Browser come on the scene, we, were, we had the Row Mobile Suite product line. 
and we still have the Roam Mobile Suite product line. It's now open sourced. At the time, Roam Mobile Suite was the answer to customer questions of, okay, we know Windows Mobile CE is end of life, and we're going back about five years now. What do we do? You know, to tell us, uh, Zebra, what, what is the next step? And you know, it wasn't so clear cut at the time that Android would be the dominant player in enterprise that it is today. You know, customers were choosing iOS, customers were choosing to use consumer devices, customers were hedging their bets on Windows Phone 8, Windows 10, and you know, we we as a company knew that these customers would eventually uh, come back to to Zebra, but at the at the time we wanted to offer a solution for customers uh, who you know weren't really sure which direction to take they wanted to be um, agnostic in in their choices so this this was a cross cross platform development kit and the portion of the development kit we're most interested in here is the shared runtime now ignore the naming I didn't come up with the naming here but the the aspect of Roam mobile suite which addresses the industrial browser is the row element shared runtime and this supports both Windows Mobile CE and Android. If you're running Row Element Shared Runtime 4 on your device, then you had at the time a choice of API sets to run with. And as we get into more of the history, we'll, we'll cover more of these. Uh, the reason an additional API set was added was because JavaScript was becoming more and more popular as a language. And there were a, an awful lot of language features of JavaScript which we weren't addressing in our existing JavaScript libraries. Things like uh, deferred, asynchronous functions being declared in line, promises. These were kind of very obvious and easy to use for a JavaScript developer, but they weren't available in our, in our API. So we knew we had to redesign the API, but that just adds additional complexity because now you have multiple API sets being used in Roam Mobile Suite 4.x, um, and we're going to talk now about how you would use them in Enterprise Browser. So one API set, which is called the Common API set, and the way to tell if you're using this is it's if your application is using the row namespace. These, this is what we named our Common API. The way to be backwards compatible in your Enterprise Browser application on Android uh, is to include in your app this row API dash modules dot js file. Now this is available if you go to C program well wherever you install Enterprise Browser. In fact, I think it installs to the root of your um, root of your drive. Uh, but if if you go to wherever you installed Enterprise Browser and look under backwards compatibility, then you'll see this row API modules dot js. If you include that in your app in EB it will expose the row namespace to your app, and you could then use your, your app that was previously written for the row elements shared runtime will run without further modifications within EB. There are some further complications to that. You, when we, th this row API modules is quite a large file. On Windows Mobile CE, then it was, uh, we, we gave the option of chopping it up so that you only had to include the specific APIs you needed to use as separate JS files, and then there was some bootstrap JavaScript file to load the APIs in. Uh, that is also available as backwards compatibility. If you know what you're doing, you can just choose, I want this API, that API. But if you're moving to Android, it's obviously a lot faster device, the rendering times are a lot quicker. If it was me personally, I would just include the, the full row API modules.js. It just means there's fewer chances for things to go wrong. The config files between RE Shared Runtime and Enterprise Browser are very, very, very similar. You can tell that one product was just reusing a lot of code of the previous product. And I mean that in the best possible way, because why change something if it's working? And so uh, but what I would not recommend is just taking your existing config file and plopping it into a new enterprise browser installation. It, I would always say uh, compare the two. Compare your existing config XML with a default EB config. There will be parameters in the new EB config that uh, you know the, the old shared runtime didn't know about. New features which EB has, has added, 
and you know the defaults of those should be predefined in in eb but it just makes it less visible to you just just do the comparison of the two files is my advice also we had full backwards compatibility between enterprise browser and row element shared runtime that includes the meta tag support and we'll we'll get onto that more as we go back uh, back in time Row elements shared runtime 2.x, and we'll, we'll start to move a little bit quicker now because there'll be a lot of commonality. This was the version of row elements that appeared before 4. So there was no version 3 uh, for very similar reasons to you know, Angular got rid of their version 3. We were amalgamating all of our products, but you know the previous version was version 2. And this was, I've said here, the first version to combine the power of Pocket Browser with the row framework. So we were bringing two API sets together. Again, at the time, it was a little bit confusing because you had the Pocket Browser API set and the row API set. A couple of things to note here. The row API set for JavaScript never got used. You almost without fail wouldn't have heard of the row JavaScript API set because it was quickly uh, deprecated and overtaken. So there's no support for that old row JavaScript API. But what you will be using is the Pocket Browser API set. And this is where we get into some a lot of confusion over naming conventions. People call that Pocket Browser API set different things, very different things. It, it's known as the Pocket Browser API, the Row Elements 1 API, the Row Elements 2 API set. All of those are exactly the same thing. And it's included, if you want to use that API set in your enterprise browser app, you include this elements.js file. And this is also available under the enterprise browser installation under the backwards compatibility directory. There's no namespace, kind of gives you an idea of when this API set was first developed because namespaces either weren't a thing or you know no one was really too bothered about using them. Everything's at the top level. So you have a top level scanner object, you have a top level battery object, signal object, and you can do things like show the battery indicator, uh, enable the scanner, you know, this is the, the old, I'm going to refer to this as the old API set from here on out. And again, we had very similar config XMLs between row element shared runtime and EB, so the same advice applies there. And the meta tag support, again, still backward compatible. Meta tags, incidentally, were a way of declaring on the page that you, could, you wanted to enable the scanner. So meta tags formerly used as a kind of server communication to declare things to the server or to do page refreshes is how I used to do it back when I was designing my GeoCities web pages at school. You would, uh, in, in the case of Pocket Browser or even now Enterprise Browser, you can define these APIs in the HTTP equiv, so scanner enabled. You don't have to do any JavaScript then. And you think, well, why, wasn't, why didn't you just use an onload handler uh, back when we first developed the product, there was no JavaScript in some of these browsers, um, certainly, or you could disable JavaScript to make it run quicker, it wasn't standards compliant with IE. So it's a very popular option for a lot of people. It, it just worked. I didn't even have to be a JavaScript developer. I just had to add these meta tags. Um, SAP compliance is something I was going to gloss over, but there's been, uh, there was a question in the forums, the developer.zebra.com forums, again, that, that Dan said at the start of this call. And the question was, I'm, I'm trying to get SAP to work with row element shared runtime, and I keep coming up against these, these strange errors. I said, well, have you tried using Enterprise Browser for SAP compliance? And the response came back, ah, it works. Thank you, that, that helped me. So in all, in all honesty, I don't know what has happened since we released row element shared runtime 2.x we are just talking about sap its mobile compliance here uh, but just maybe the maybe the key takeaway here is eb is sap compliant we haven't lost that we are aware that that is a very uh, sought after feature for a lot of our developers and again moving backwards in time again we have row elements 1.x this was the first version of Romo. This is not, sorry, not anything to do with Row Mobile Suite. This was a standalone product, and it just took what was at the time known as Pocket Browser 3, and it added that WebKit component to Windows Mobile CE that I told you about earlier, and it also added support for Android devices. So this is the first, the first kind of product line where you might have had the same application running on both 
Windows Mobile CE and Android devices. Same as before, if you are using the, again, we're still using the old API set that I described on the previous slide, you need to include elements.js as part of your enterprise browser page. And you can use DOM injection to inject that if you don't want to change any of your application's code. Uh, you, the, the DOM injection feature enables you to, in the config file, define a list of files which will be post loaded into the page. So elements.js could be one of them. Uh, it also wraps, so obviously we were using the IE engine, and so our JavaScript, in order to access native code, was using the, because we never had add JavaScript interface, uh, which you have in modern Android uh, web views, uh, we were using ActiveX to communicate between native code. And so we were wrapping that ActiveX object, uh, sorry, that in order to be backwards compatible with old applications, we create a fake ActiveX object on the page. And so like the, the previous pocket browser application or row elements one would have been saying, uh, var my object equals new ActiveX object and then the name of the object. So there's only so many predefined objects so we just included those and made them constructible in JavaScript and did, did the needful in order to make that all backwards compatibility, backwards compatible with enterprise browser. Uh, I already mentioned the custom web rendering component, that WebKit component was introduced in 1.x. So it's, it's worth, if you're coming from row elements one, it's worth kind of realizing, am I coming from an IE world or am I coming from a WebKit world moving to Android, which is obviously this modern rendering engine. I've got a, a table, very last slide actually, is a table of all the different rendering engines we've had over the years. Uh, it's just a little list here, some of the differences. I think I've covered, oh, oh, keyboard APIs. Yeah, so a lot of customers wanted to move the keyboard around on Windows Mobile. Oh, I'm just going to say Windows CE from now on, but that covers mobile and CR. So they, some customers would want the keyboard at the top, the very small SIP, you know, the soft input panel that we had on these old devices. Some people would move it up a little bit, so it gave them an opportunity to put a, a bar down the bottom with some custom positioning, some, some custom action buttons, sorry. Now, the keyboard is not movable on Android, so you might have some problems there, and the APIs which move the keyboard around won't work on your Android devices. Uh, font support, you know, you, you've got the default fonts in Android, Ro Roboto, or I don't know how you pronounce it, but you know, there's a default monospace font, serif font, sans serif. With Android, uh, sorry, with Windows, you could kind of customize those. You had full access to the device. You could add new things to the font directory. You could change the default fonts that way. But, uh, and, and we also expose some of that capability through our custom WebKit engine but none of that is available right now on Android. You kind of, you have to go with the fonts that Android provides because um, we obviously don't support rooting our devices. Uh, um, what else is there? Yeah, so I, I think I covered scrolling. Um, scroll bars, scroll bars were a huge part of many applications running on Windows CE devices. It's, it's difficult to imagine now, uh, even for me, but there was a, a rather large backlash when we started to move towards CE7, which didn't support scroll bars in uh, in Internet Explorer, and we had a big back and forth with Microsoft trying to get them to include them because you know, our customers, you guys, were demanding scroll bars in your applications, believe it or not. But uh, nowadays, obviously, everything is panning around scrolling. So it, it's possible applications were written with scrolling in mind. Just bear that in mind as you move forward to Android. Okay, we're on the home stretch. Pocket Browser 3.x, the final version of the Pocket Browser product line. Uh, very few changes between Row Elements 1 and Pocket Browser 3. The, the key difference, I guess, is it only supports Windows Mobile CE. At the back of this, uh, of this, what am I doing, presentation, there's a number of links, and one of them is to the official guide for moving from Pocket Browser to Enterprise Browser. And you'll, you'll kind of think, if you read through that, it's talking about moving from Pocket Browser to Enterprise Browser, but you're going to be staying on Windows CE. Uh, and obviously, that's not the, the point of this talk. Uh, it kind of shows the age of that, of, of that guide. I didn't remember until I was preparing for this talk, but I actually wrote a blog myself talking about how to move from Pocket Browser to Row Elements. And again, I was assuming you stay on, on 
uh, CE, and this was back in 2012 to give you an idea of when these uh, guides might have been written. The main difference between Pocket Browser 2 and Pocket Browser 3 is an ML, a change to the ML syntax. Now, ML was a technology developed by Zebra's ancestor companies, stands for Enterprise Mobility Markup Language, and you get a point if you're familiar with ML or if you've ever used ML, because it's, uh, it's where I started working. But essentially, this was a way to define the, the API. It was a way to define how you want to control the hardware. So nowadays you have a JavaScript API where you just call methods and functions, but you wanted a way to do that declaratively because you needed to do it through the meta tags. And so your ML, it would just be a string and it would look something like scanner code 128 enables semicolon code 39 disabled semicolon enable to enable the scanner. And you know, that string would be passed as, as part of the meta tag. Um, it, it doesn't, I'm not covering on this call exactly how to write ML, but the key there is that the syntax changed between 1.0 and 1.1. We added in a regular expression engine uh, into Windows Mobile CE's Pocket Browser, and then this regular expression engine continued into Row Elements 1, and it's even in Pocket, it's even in Enterprise Browser today on Android and Windows Mobile CE. And the purpose of that was to convert the ML 1.0 code to ML 1.1 code. You know, it, it was small differences, like rather than battery X equals 50, we were now using battery left colon 50, you know, those kind of things. And it, so if you have an application written in ML 1.0, they're quite old now, uh, you, they will still work, but you just need to have regular expressions enabled in Enterprise Browser. By default, at one point, we disabled them, so I'm not sure whether they're enabled or disabled by default, but enable them if you're using backwards compatibility. And again, we have the elements.js file for backwards compatibility with the JavaScript API access. Final slide on Pocket Browser. Um, just a note here, hopefully you're not using Pocket Browser 1. I've not seen any sales of Pocket Browser 1 for years now. Um, and it's not, in all honesty, although we'll say we are backwards compatible, it's not been tested in, in quite some time. Uh, so, you know, but let's assume you're using Pocket Browser 2.x. That's using the ML 1.0 syntax. Like I said on the previous slide, make sure you have that use regular expression set to, to true, uh, kind of shows where the background of the developers came from uh, when they were writing the config file that we chose zero and one to be false and true. Um, it makes sure that's in, in the config. SAP compliance, yes, at the time we had SAP compliance, but it, identical to what I was saying about row elements 2.x, uh, it should just work with enterprise browser. In fact, it probably works better based on some of the feedback that I've been getting. And again, at the time, this was just ITS mobile. There's no SAP HANA compliance or, um, in all honesty, it's a, it's a little bit above me, but the, the other SAP systems were not, uh, were, were not compliant. Other way around, we weren't compliant with them because they didn't exist yet. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so a couple of slides on just migrating from some of Zebra's competitor products. Now, I, I need to be very careful here because obviously I'm talking uh, in a, an official Zebra dev talk. I'm a developer primarily. I'm now a you know, software architect slash developer. I'm not a sales guy, so I can't really stand up here and, and give you, you know, the sales pitch for any of these products. And also I've not used these products in anger. You know, maybe I've played around with them over the years, but I've never really tried to develop any apps for them because I was you know, head, head, head in the ground in uh, Pocket Browser and, and Row Elements Shared Runtime. But let's say, for example, you're migrating from the Nortec browser. Nortec browser, some of this naming gets confusing as well. So even I forget it, but I've tried to be accurate on this slide. So there's a, a CE term application which is uh, or was offered by the Nortec company and or no sorry by the Wavelink company and this terminal emulation application had within it a browser component which was the Nortec browser. Now Wavelink is now owned by Avanti so there is a Avanti product called Velocity uh, and so let's assume you have an existing application using Nortec 
the option for you if you want to move to Android and the option, the easiest option without wanting to, to push anyone in any direction would in all honesty be to migrate to this Velocity browser. Now, the reason I say that is because uh, we, Zebra, have a very close working relationship with Avanti. The app forums, which Dan mentioned at the start of this call, they were a pre premier sponsor of. So we're, we work close together with these guys. I spoke to their developer at one of their app forums, and I said exactly this scenario. What if an, a developer has created a Nautic browser application? Will it work with the Velocity browser? And the response I got back was, yes, it should do. Uh, obviously being a little bit cagey in the response there, but uh, looking at the documentation, the meta tags match between Velocity and uh, Nortec browser. Uh, some of the ActiveX objects are missing. I forget the names of them, but so you might have to change your application to some degree uh, just to, to modify the app to work around those ActiveX objects, maybe move to meta tag logic or, or I don't know, maybe write something natively. I'm not sure, but you know, it, it, that's probably the easiest option at least to try first. The second option, if you're dead set on going with EB, maybe you know, hearing me on this call has just convinced you that EB is the best thing in the world. There is like, although we don't officially support it in Enterprise Browser, just bear in mind that that similarity between Pocket Browser, Nortec, and, and um, Intermec Browser that I spoke about at the start of this call, it comes in useful here because a lot of the meta tags were very, very similar between the products. So you can use the, the regular expressions engine I mentioned, just add a few additional expressions to convert your Nortec browser meta tags into a format that will be recognized by Enterprise Browser. Now that might be a little bit of a steep learning curve for a lot of people, but it is an option nonetheless. I think, yeah, the, the, uh, the eyebrows was prepended to the meta tags that are very similar. So rather than scanner enabled, it was eyebrows underscore scanner enabled. Um, and the other option, or so the other alternative, is maybe you're migrating from the Intermec browser. And again, the same as, as I said on the previous slide, limited experience here. This is from speaking with customers and kind of reading around the documentation. So the history of the company, Intermec was acquired by Honeywell in 2013. I was surprised how long ago that was when I was putting the slide together. I thought it was more recently than that. Um, they have their own enterprise browser. I think that was deliberately just to confuse things for this presentation, but don't confuse that from their HTML5 browser. So there's two different offerings. There's Honeywell's enterprise browser and HTML5 browser. The former supports the industrial browser use case and the latter is literally just a browser. It enables you to, to browse pages on your Windows Mobile CE devices. Now these only run on Honeywell Intermec devices. So it's not an option for you to, uh, like, oh, like on the previous slide where I was saying just run Velocity on Zebra devices, that won't work. So similar to how EB only works on Zebra devices, Honeywell's EB only works on the competitor devices. So option one, let's assume you want to move to a Zebra Android device. Maybe this is the easy way out for me, but you just have to rewrite your application, I'm afraid. Um, it's probably fairly old by now. You know, this, this technology is, you know, I don't know, it might be like six, seven years old. Maybe it's time to rewrite the application under these circumstances. If you are determined to not rewrite your application, uh, similar to what I discussed on the previous slide, maybe you can convert the existing meta tags to a format recognized by Zebra's industrial uh, enterprise browser. And in this case, remember previously it was eyebrows underscore, and now they're IB underscore. So just use regular expressions to strip those off. I don't know anyone that's ever tried that. It falls under the it should work category of, um, of options. But, uh, and then you also have additional uh, challenges around the dot, the ActiveX objects that were present with uh, Honeywell's enterprise browser. So maybe you could use DOM injection to mimic those, similar to how enterprise browser mimics the old pocket browser ActiveX object. So it is possible, you just have to create a constructible JavaScript object. And final slide, I'll, I'll leave this up here. This is uh, just a, a table that I put together just for my own nostalgia's sake, first of all, but I thought it might be useful to share with you guys. We've, we've come a long way. The rendering engines seem, even on the old Windows CE mobile days, you know, we, we had lots of different rendering engines. It was originally 
pocket IE where where we you know it's very limited couldn't do much CSS very limited JavaScript very limited in what it supported CE was always a little bit ahead of Windows Mobile but as a cross-platform framework these industrial browsers had to support the minimum which was always Windows Mobile we then moved on to IE 6 on 6 and you had the additional complication where some of these Windows embedded handheld 6.3 devices sorry 6.5.3 devices had two different versions of enterprise I'm sorry I keep saying the wrong thing of in of Internet Explorer on them they had the old pocket IE from Windows Mobile 6.1 they had IE 6 on 6 I think at one point they also had a, a version of the CE browser control as well, or it was a more functional version. But anyway, this only one was exposed via Pocket Browser, which was IE6, the most recent one. You might be using our own WebKit, uh, the, the Zebra proprietary WebKit, the HTML compliant browser, like I say. And even nowadays, you know, you think of think of this as a, a previous problem with, oh my God, there's so many different versions of Internet Explorer. Well, there's so many different versions of the Android browser. You need to know what you're targeting. Luckily, HTML5 has gone a long way to make it so the same app will just, just run anywhere without modification. But you, you have to be aware of like how to update the browser. You probably don't want to have different versions of the browser running on different devices. So with L and M GMS devices, it was updatable by the Play Store. With N and above, it's going to be updated whenever you update the Chrome application. So the, the system web view is going to going to use Chrome's web view. It's not separately updatable. So it's just maybe a little bit more of a headache for the people managing these devices because you want to push out security patches, obviously. But at the same time, you want ideally everything to be on the same version. So. Uh, just something to be aware of there with the different versions of the rendering engines and with that uh, there's been no questions during the talk so hopefully i've not been talking to myself for 40 minutes but i will open the floor up to questions darren thanks a lot that was a really really great overview and i I think you did a really nice job of covering some of the different options that people will run into. Uh, at this point, I am not seeing any questions yet, so we will keep our eyes peeled to see if anyone has any uh, any that pop up. Thanks, Dan. I've, I've just moved the slide on to some of the references, and these slides will be available after the talk rather than uh, trying to write down these these URLs but these are just the guides I was referring to during the presentation my old blog I did in 2012 and also there's a, a far more up-to-date blog in uh, that I did a couple of months ago which was kind of the genesis of this presentation um, so if you want any more detail of anything I've said on the call then that recent blog should be your first point of call uh, so, Darren, we did get a question regarding SAP HANA support by the rendering engine. Okay. So, I do not believe we support HANA in the latest version of Enterprise Browser, but I believe the team is looking into it with a view to doing it at some point. I could get an authoritative, authoritative answer from the EB team uh, on that. So, if you leave that with me, Dan. Okay. I'll give you the, the person's uh, contact information so you can follow up. Thank you. And we did get a, a compliment, a couple compliments. People are really uh, thought it was a great review uh, with good information. Um, Thank you. I did I, want I to worried. also reiterate, um, so the slides that Darren has, we will put them on the developer portal under developer events. Uh, we have all the dev talks. Uh, the current ones are kind of on the, the main part and the, uh, ones that we've already done are on the right side of the page. So we'll put the slides up and we will get the recording up, posted on YouTube and embedded in there. That usually takes probably three days, uh, but we should be able to get the, the slides up later today or at least first thing tomorrow. Uh, looks like those are all the questions we have, uh, Aaron. Brilliant. Well, uh, thank you everyone for for joining, and uh, I hope everyone found it very useful.
All right. Thanks a lot, Darren. And we look forward to hearing from you. I think next month uh, you're giving us another one of our Dev Talks. We have two lined up in September. Uh, so look forward to uh, seeing a lot of these uh, same folks back uh, next month. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.